Heavenly Father, we worship you and we give you thanks. It is indeed a great day, and we are joyful, we are thankful for what you have done for us. As we sit to hear from you, I pray that you may use me as your vessel, that together we may be blessed of you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We may have our seats. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. I'm grateful to God this morning for enabling me to be here with you, just to share his good news with us. For the sake of visitors, I'm Reverend Anthony Minor, and Christ is Lord and Savior of my life. The Gospel of John uh, gives us a picture of what was happening today early in the morning. And we see Mary Magdalene and other ladies uh, waking up very early in the morning while it was still dawn, it was still dark, and they went to the tomb. The reason for their going there was to do the ceremonial uh, acts to the dead body, embalming the body of Jesus Christ. They were worried who will roll the stone for them. And the Bible tells that to their amazement, the stone had been rolled away and Jesus was not there. Mary goes back to the disciples and shares with them what she had seen. To her thinking, somebody must have taken Jesus away from the tomb. We see Peter and the other disciple whom Jesus loved most now running to the tomb. And we are told that the disciple outran Peter. But when he arrived, he didn't get into the tomb. But when Peter came, he got inside the tomb and he really they confirmed that Jesus was not there. The, the Bible tells us they believed. But what they believed probably is what Mary had told them, that somebody had taken the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Men, they went back to their homes. <laughs> Men quickly left and went back, but we see Mary stayed there put, crying and asking, what am I going to do? Remember, this is the Mary who had been healed. He, she was demon-possessed, and Jesus had healed her of that sickness. And while she was there in anguish, then the angels appeared to her, and as she was conversing without knowing whether it was Jesus, then when Jesus calls her name, she quickly remembered the voice of Jesus. And she called Jesus Rabon, teacher. And Jesus did not allow her to touch him because he had not ascended to the Father. And Jesus tells her, go and tell the disciples that I am risen and will meet in Galilee. That's the sto short story from the Gospel of John, as it was read to us. And uh, this leads me to my topic today, the resurrection power of Christ. The resurrection power of Christ. I'll be also uniting that uh, Gospel with Philippians chapter 3, uh, verse 10. I want us to think about the importance of the resurrection power of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is a purpose for which Christ rose from the dead. And this purpose is for all of us to know that there is power available to us through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. There is power that has been provided. It is available for all of us that we may be able to live a resurrected life. In Ephesians 3.10, Paul says, I want to know Christ. I want to know the power of resurrection. Uh, this is our desire. This should be our desire, that we know Christ and know the power of resurrection. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23 and 24 records that knowing God is more important 
than anything else. And Jeremiah quotes the word of wisdom, the strength, and the riches. Humanly, we tend to admire the bright people. We tend to admire the knowledgeable, the intelligent. We tend to admire the physically gifted, the talented, the beautiful ones. But Jeremiah is telling us that what is more important is to have a, that relationship with God, to understand who God is, and to know our covenant God. It's better than anything else. Jesus himself quotes Jeremiah when we read John 17, that, that, uh, 17 verse 3, when he prayed for his disciples. And Jesus says, now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. Eternal life is knowing God and knowing our Lord Jesus Christ. On Good Friday, uh, we were taught a lot of things here, and we did want to thank God for uh, Reverend John because he spoke to us extensively on the words of God. And we learned that Jesus had to die so that we may have uh, Easter today. Without the death of Jesus Christ, we wouldn't be celebrating Easter. And this reminds us that sometimes we have to go through difficulties. And once we are out of those difficult moments, we are able uh, to celebrate our Lord Jesus Christ. So Christianity is not based on abstract principles. Christianity is a relationship with the living Savior. As we can know, a Savior who wants to empower us, a Savior who wants to transform our lives into his likeness. That's why we are talking about the resurrection power. We, we, are, we need to accept to be transformed. Jesus' desire is that we experience this power of his resurrection. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 19 to 20, uh, the Bible says, I pray that you will begin to understand how incredibly great his power is to help those who believe in him. In John 14, 12 to 14, Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say to you, if you believe in me, you will do the things that I've been doing, and even greater than this. So Jesus wants believers to have that power, to experience uh, the power. He is sharing with us his power so that we can be able to do the works that he, is, he did. And as John says, even greater than the works that he did. It is that same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in heaven. When Paul is speaking to us in Romans, not, not in Romans, he speaks to us from what I said earlier, that is Philippians 3.10, Paul is using the word uh, dunimus for power, which is a Greek word. And this is what uh, means dynamite. Dynamite is, is something that can explode, has a power to explode. And this is the power that uh, Paul is talking about. It's the supernatural power. It is the divine power. Uh, power. It is not the ordinary power. Uh, Jesus Christ's desire is to share with us the resurrection power. That we may live a resurrected life is a life that is full of supernatural power. A life that is full of divine uh, power. So God wants to give us power. God wants to share with us his supernatural power that can change our lives. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead 2,000 years ago 
is available to us today to transform our weaknesses, to transform our low status, and to give us strength. It doesn't matter the difficulties that we are going through. Could it be addiction? Could it be anger? Could it be frustration? Could it be failure? But today, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is assuring us that as he overcame, we too are more than conquerors. As Christians, we believe without doubt that Jesus arose from the dead. But how impactful is that belief in us? How is it impacting our life? What difference is this resurrection? As we say today, he is risen. Is it making an impact in our lives? Are we a beacon of hope to the world today? That is the desire of our Lord Jesus Christ, that we may have that power. We may be the light of the world. In John chapter 11, verses 25, we read about the story of Lazarus. And here we see Jesus conversing with the family, the Mary and Martha. And they were very distraught because when Lazarus was sick, they had sent a word to Jesus that Jesus, your friend, is sick. And they believed that Jesus would come quickly and heal Lazarus. But Jesus did what was not expected. He delayed for four days. And they were mocked by people. Where is your friend? Now your brother has died. You called for this friend. He has healed others. He is taking care of other people, but he is not concerned about you. And Jesus took four days. And when he came to the family, and he met Mary, Mary was crying. And Jesus is telling Mary, Yes, you are. Lazarus will rise again. And she, and she tells Jesus, I know he will rise again during the resurrection. Because many people had told her. Many people had comforted her with those ones. So she didn't realize that these ones were now coming from Jesus Christ. And Jesus knew that he was going to perform a miracle there and then. Jesus was going to rise up Lazarus. Sometimes we look at the power of resurrection at a distance in a futuristic manner. We, we think of the resurrection in the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ is telling Martha and Mary that you are going to see the resurrection now. What I'm trying to say is that uh, the resurrection power is within us. It's with us and we can experience it Today, we see Jesus praying and thanking God because he answers his prayers and he prayed that called Lazarus from the dead and Lazarus came out of the dead. Brethren, it doesn't matter the impossibilities that we are going through. It doesn't matter the challenges that we go through. Let us not focus so much on the grave situation, but let us focus on the power available to us through the name of Jesus Christ. Let us focus on the promises of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, let the sick say they are healed. Let the poor say they are rich. Many times we focus on the negativity and we we'll fail to focus on the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is inviting us today to believe in him. He is telling Martha, didn't I, not, didn't I tell you, did I not tell you that I am the life and the resurrection? And even at the two he is telling Mary Magdalene, did I, did I not tell you that 
I will resurrect on the third day. Many times we don't take the word of God with the seriousness that it takes. When Jesus is praying, Jesus is saying, Father, I thank you because you always hear my prayer. Many times we go to God for prayers, but with so many doubts. You are praying for a sick person, but it's like you're doing it as a ritual. Let me just pray. But the way he is, I don't think whether he will recover. You're just praying, but uh, at the back of your mind, uh, but Jesus is praying confidently that, Father, you always hear my prayer. You always hear my prayer. There are situations in life we feel that they are written off, they are come to the end, is a dead end, but God is asking us to apply faith in all the situations in our lives. I know many of us believe in the resurrection intellectually, but God is calling us to put our belief in the resurrection into practice. In James chapter 2 verse 9, Jesus, uh, James says, you believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shunder. So believing in resurrection is, even the devil believes. But now, living a resurrected life, living in the power of resurrection makes the difference. When he said that he wanted, when Paul said that he wanted to know the power of Christ's resurrection, he was himself in prison. And Paul sees beyond prison. He was about to be executed. And he says, I want to see, to know the power of resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And God gave him boldness. He was able to stand and defend his case. And he was not persecuted at that, at that moment. He is calling us to, as I have said, to look beyond the grave situation and trust God and have courage. On Friday, Reverend John told us that when Jesus said, it is finished, if it were we, we would have said, I am finished. <laughs> but Jesus said, it is finished. He knew the kind of work he had come to accomplish, and he was courageous. No one was taking away his life. He was willingly giving his life. In my short life, and especially in ministry, I have seen desperation of people who have hit the rock bottom, as we always say. Maybe when they lose a job, divorced, rejected, or being despised. The list is endless. And at such moments, somebody feels that he or she has lost their self-worth. Somebody feels shattered. I was reading yesterday's paper at uh, Wango Karori on the Saturday magazine was giving us stories of women who have risen from ashes. They had gone down. Their lives had been shattered completely. Some because of barrenness, some because of divorce, some are young ladies who got pregnant while in college and they were not able to manage their lives. Their lives were shattered. But she was giving us those resurrection stories that they were able to pick up their lives again and today they are renowned people in society. Praise be to God. So we, we can pick it again. We can pick our lives again. 
when we go through these difficult moments, sometimes they, they, they make us see our strengths. They enable us to see and to experience our strengths. And we walk on the other side even more stronger, more intelligent, with a lot of wisdom. We have observed people who have faced life threatening illnesses. And you find somebody you are going to pray for a person, and the person is even encouraging you all the more. The person is sick. But that person has quietly taken that sickness with confidence, knowing that uh, God is able to heal me. And you go to pray for a person, and that person encourages you. We thank God for giving Christians such great hope and faith that they can see beyond their grave situations. They have hope in Christ resurrected. Terminal illnesses is not our end. Sometimes we receive those reports from doctors and the families are shattered. Jesus' word is still alive to us today and powerful. When John the Baptist sent his disciples to Jesus to, so, to see and to know whether he was the Messiah, Jesus sent them back and told them, go and tell him, the lepers are healed, the lame walk, the bride receive their sight. Even today, we say our God is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. He is our healer. He is able to overturn our bad situations. Some life experiences are very shattering. Just want to talk of a divorce as an example. It comes with a lot of pain. It comes with a lot of chaos in the family. But we have seen many who have gone through divorce, though it may take long, but we have seen them come back to life. We have seen people come back to their new life because of believing in the resurrection power of Christ. We need not to give up in life, be it in our businesses, be it in our parenting, we need never, never to give up because if Jesus could rise up from the grave, every grave situation in our lives can come back to life. Praise be to God. Amen. Brethren, many times we face situations when we feel like the world is caving in and we feel we are helpless. We need always to turn to Christ, who cares for us. God is always ready to hear our prayers. God is always ready to listen to us because he cares for us. I want to end up with a story because John gave you a story and you are happy about it. <laughs> I believe you are going to be happy with this one also. <laughs> it's a true story. In the year 1873, Spafford, a lawyer from Chicago, placed his wife and four daughters on a luxury liner sailing from New York to France. Spafford expected to join them in about three to four weeks after finishing the business but with the expectation of his wife, he never saw the children again. We are told that the trip started on beautifully, but on the evening of November 21st, 1873, as the ship was proceeding peacefully across Atlantic, it was suddenly struck by another vessel and it sank a mere 12 minutes later with the loss of nearly all those who were on board. 
On being told that the ship was sinking, Mrs. Sparford knelt with her four children and prayed that they might be saved or be willing to die. A very painful prayer indeed. A few minutes later, in that confusion, three of her daughters were swept away by the strong waves. And while she stood clutching to the youngest, suddenly she was snatched from her by the strong waves. And at that moment, she became unconscious, only to awake later and find that she was rescued by the sailors from the vessel that had struck the luxury liner. Back in the United States, Spafford was waiting for the news of his family. And at last, 10 days later, it came. And the wife told him that she was saved alone. You could imagine what Spafford went through that night. It was full of anguish. The writer says he walked up and above in the room, all over rolling himself down the floor. But as time went by, as, she poured, as he poured his heart before the Lord about this great loss, the Lord gave him peace. And he was able to share his experiences. And one day he said, I am glad to be able to trust my God when it costs me something. And this is the man who Sometimes later, when he was reflecting on the disaster at the sea, the choir know this very well. He sang the hymn. When peace like a river at death by way, when so rose like sea, be lost from whatever my Lord that has taught me to say it is well it is well with my soul it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Brethren, do not underestimate the resurrection power. The resurrection power centers in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is alive because he lives. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Let us live our lives without being ignorant of our present situations. But more importantly, being alive to the resurrection power within us, the risen Christ is both our future hope and our present strength. He has already given us eternal life. We hereby have the privilege of beginning to live it now, no matter what life we are facing today. In the name of God the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.